It's another beautiful Sunday afternoon. This is Robin Minds. Welcome. My name is Ebuka Obuja. Thanks a lot for joining us today. We're still in the middle of a global pandemic and the middle of a lockdown in Lagos, Abuja, Ogun State. And the state induced ones, of course, in many states across Nigeria. Um, still very strange times across the world. Most people still not sure how things are going to unfold going forward. Um, but yes, Nigeria has crossed the 1,000 mark with regards to the number of infections, confirmed infections in Nigeria, over 1,000 so far. And a lot of people are still not sure when the curve is going to peak and probably start flattening and descending. We don't know if we've reached our peak here in Nigeria. The federal government uh, induced uh, lockdown is supposed to end tomorrow, which is... Which would have mean, which would mean it would have been on for about four weeks now in the two uh, major cities in Nigeria, Lagos, Abuja, and of course Ogun State. We don't know what Mr. President has planned for us tomorrow if the lockdown is now over, if the states are still going to extend that. We did hear something about, about state governors uh, saying that they are trying to impose a restriction on um, interstate travel. Uh, we don't know if that means there's going to be lockdowns in, in all of the states. Some, some states are witnessing spikes. Um, Anambra State seems to be loosening the, the lockdown a little because they had just one confirmed case at Innova almost two weeks now. They haven't had an, another case, so they're trying to um, loosen, um, loosen up the, the lockdown in the state. But Kano State has been quite worrying for a lot of people, especially because of the number of deaths from an unconfirmed case so far or ailments. We've heard about 640 people have died in the last week alone. We don't know if it's a coronavirus related. So many speculations are going on and we're hoping we can get an official of the Kano State government to speak with us before the end of the show today. Um, hopefully we can get some answers because a lot of Nigerians are worried with regards to the fact that this death, the death rate is really high. We don't know if it's a coronavirus related thing. People are saying meningitis, some are saying less of fever. We don't know what it is. And um, it's quite strange that a week later we're still confused and the deaths are still ongoing. People in Kano State deserve answers. People in Nigeria deserve to know what's going on. But hey, the coronavirus is still being talked about. COVID-19 is in everyone's mind. Um, while we talk about that security and of course hunger is a big part of everything and the federal government did talk about you know sending out palliatives to millions and millions of the poorest of nigerians most people are not sure how that distribution has worked out and even if it has gotten to those who need them we're going to be starting off the show today speaking on what the palliatives have been and if they have been enough and if they've been well sort of implemented and what the plan will be going forward and joining me now is one of our regulars on the show chidi okiriki i don't know if chidi can hear me chidi how are you doing Hi, Ibuka. How are you doing? Is Chidi with us? Can you hear me, Chidi? Yes, I can hear you. Hi, Ibuka. Good afternoon. So, yeah, how are you holding up so far? <laughs> Man, I mean, it's it's been tough. Um, being Considering the fact that I live alone and um, not been able to go out a lot as we used to, um, business has been slow, everything. Um, it's been tough, but then we're holding up, like, I mean, we're survivors. We're, we're, going, to, we're going to survive always. So let's talk about the palliatives now, because the federal government has said um, they were going to be giving almost 4 million Nigerians, you know, some sort of help, you know, with regards to sustaining themselves with cash transfers, some with food distribution and all of that. What have been your thoughts so far on, on how this has worked out? Hmm. To be honest, yeah, we, we all have our suspicions of the government. We don't trust the um, we don't trust the administration and all that. Um, um, they said they were going to give 2.6 million million Nigerians um, palliatives. They're going to distribute it to them. They opted to 3.6 million Nigerians. And um, as a matter of fact, I I personally do not know anybody who has received that palliative. I mean, in other countries, you you hear that people are getting their stimulus checks and all that, and they are posting it on social media and all that. But it does make sense. I mean, if I'm going to play the devil's advocate, it does make sense that we don't know the people who are receiving these palliatives because according to them, um, it is given to the poorest of the poor. And considering statistics and all that, the poorest of the poor means those people who probably do not have access to social media and all that. So um, we're just hoping that the, the distribution is getting to the right people. Um, we hope that there's going to be an audit at the end of the day so that we're going to know if they distributed to all the people they said they were going to distribute to. We just hope that this is not some, um, some, some people are not profiting off this misfortune, um, which is, you know, typical of 
people who are in the system. I mean, that these are all the things we can only hope for. I'm ready to give them the benefit of the doubts because I don't want to fight at this point. I'm ready to give them the benefit of the doubt that they are doing what they said they're going to do. But we hope that there's going to be some transparency and accountability at the end of the day. That is very important. Yeah, a lot of people seem to be on the same page with you with regards to not being able to see the distribution happen. Um, it's not even necessarily about knowing anyone who's who's um, in that category or in that class. But, I mean, if, if these things were happening in your community or in communities that you know of, we would have heard or seen them. But most people in Lagos, in there's, there's certain, certain states seem to be exempt from this. I know some state governors are doing things on their own, but the federal government uh, um, um, help doesn't seem to be for all states affected, especially considering the fact that certain states are more affected than others. Um, where, where are these things going to? And still talking about states as well. I know Lagos State Government is trying to do something on their part as well. Um, what do you think about the Lagos State Government's effort? Hmm. So the, the uh, and, and I have to say, first of all, um, I'm, I've been impressed by the Lagos State Government. I've been, I've been quite impressed by their handling of the, of the spread of the um, coronavirus, how the government has always been, you know, out there, putting himself out there, communicating with people and all that. But then you, while, while we while we praise when praise needs to happen, let's also tell the truth about the things that we've seen, the things that we've heard. We've heard about streets, we've heard about communities where the supposed distribution that got to them, say four bags of rice for if for a community of about one thousand people, like how does it even go around in the first place? Um, so while I do say the handling of the virus has been has been pretty good, pretty decent, how the governor rallied the, the private sector and all that, while as it has been commendable, the truth is that the distribution of palliative has not been impressive. Um, we, we we find out that the the, the federal government's um, list excludes certain states. Um, Lagos State, for example, has the has the most has the most cases. Lagos State started a lockdown even before the official lockdown. It's sort of a lockdown before the official lockdown. Um, Lagos State is the most affected. How come? How come the palliatives are being distributed to people in states that are still, you know, going about like? business as usual. Um, it's a curious case. And while one can say Nigeria is not so rich that it can handle, you know, spreading to as many people as possible, still, there's a fault in the system. There's a big fault in the system. Our records are poor. Um, our methods of, you know, distributing stuff at this point is plenty of, I mean, this is, this is, these are peculiar times. This is extraordinary times. So I understand mistakes can happen. But then going forward, there's a lot of lessons to be learned, how to plan for events like this, how to not exclude, how to not decide um, people who are most vulnerable, people who need these things more based on political leanings. No, it's not right. There's a state that has been on lockdown. There's a state where people are not moving around. That state should be prioritized above all else. Um, I know there's there's whispers, you know, across the country about an ex a possible extension of the lockdown. We don't know if that's going to be the case. Most people are advocating already that it needs to end because people need to go back to work because there's hunger. But there's also talks about, you know, the state governor saying that we need at least two more weeks uh, of this lockdown to happen nationwide. Um, we're talking a lot about hunger here. You live in Lagos, I believe. Looking at the situation in your community and in the state as a whole and across Nigeria even, can Nigerians handle another two weeks? They, they are, to be honest, there are merits for every argument, every part of the divide you're on, whether you want the lockdown to continue or you want the lockdown to be lifted. There's an argument, there's a, there's a valid argument for your position. But the truth is this, our, our systems, our healthcare systems cannot handle more um, um, the... If, if the cases increase, like if the cases go out of hand, our healthcare systems cannot handle it. I mean, um, I mean, why we're not particularly sure what's happening in Kano. Kano is an example of, you know, what can happen when things go, when things go out of hand. So um, if the government is saying we're locking down for another two weeks, let us understand that that's who is, it is for our own good. Now, I'm, I might be saying this from a place of privilege. I don't deny that. Um, there are people who actually need to go out to feed, need to go out to survive. Um, I could say that, the, that there should be a general lockdown, but then people who need to, you know, go and um, get food and get stuff can still do it. The, the lockdown, at the end of the day, the lockdown is very, very key for it not to spread for that. I mean, we've crossed 1,000 cases. 
a month ago we were about 50. Now we're over 1,000. And it's it's scary how fast this thing is spreading. So if they are saying another two weeks lockdown, it is important that we stick to it. Now it is now the responsibility of the government to ensure that the crunch is not being felt by, it's not being felt as much. Of course, it's going to be felt, but then they reduce the cushion, the effects of the lockdown, which is why they should increase the number of people who are getting this, getting these palliative measures. And then they should also not just increase the numbers, they should they should go back to the drawing board and look at their list and you know find a way to ensure that people are not suffering as much as they currently are okay chidi um i'm gonna move on now to we have another guest uh, that i want to just take a few pointers from because there's a lot happening with the situation right now and um i believe bukola uh adebakin who's the team lead for the future project is joining us as well um, and I just want to find out from you, because we're talking a lot about palliatives now. And so many videos keep popping up on social media of people, you know, even private individuals trying to help, you know, people in, in these times. But the scenes and the visuals are very, very appalling. You know, in these times where social distancing and has become sort of the anthem, a lot of people don't seem to understand that yet. You see bags of rice being thrown and people in their hordes, you know, rushing to... to pick these things and it just it just makes you wonder are we ready to beat this disease yet considering the sort of scenes that we see uh, around the country uh, hi, did you hear me Bukala? hi yes hi. go on okay yeah so um just taking off from what chaiji just said i think we are paying um the price of zero data of not having inaccurate sensors and proper um, national mapping um, generally in the country. And that's why we are paying the price now. Um, <clears throat> on your question as to how the palliatives are being shared and with the videos on social media of how people are going out, taking, um, taking some of this relief material has been shared. I would say again, orderliness is <laughs> something that uh, we need to work on. So as individuals, when we go out to uh, wanting to just contribute our own quarter to ensuring that um, these relief materials are being shared, food is being shared. We need to go to the right places. For example, I understand that um, for Lagos State, uh, there is this um, platform, Lashra, where um, Lagosians have registered. And you have to go to your local government and then get the people in charge to help you distribute these things. And people can be on the, on the file and then give um, some good um, distance from each other instead of rushing to get it. If you realize, if you look at some of these videos, you realize in, in the process of sharing it, you can't even measure if one person is getting more than what is required for each each household. So I think there's a lot that we need to do. And we need to also look at the local government and the LDAs to share um, some of these relief materials that are going out. Yeah. Um, but, but are you worried, though, or, or how do you feel with regards to just the general attitude by, of Nigerians so far? I know there's been a lockdown in certain states. Most people have complied, to be fair. A lot of people are understand the need to stay at home, but there's still a couple of people who do not really s maybe feel the gravity of this or even understand it, or maybe are even too hungry to care at this point. Do you think Nigerians are at the point where they understand that, okay, these are the things that need to be done and actually follow through with the rule? To be fair, there's been a lot of compliance and then um, especially at say middle class and those at the top of the pyramid. But if you look at those at the bottom of the pyramid, um, a lot of them don't even understand why they should sit at home because most of them get their daily, in, um, their daily means as um, income. They get um, income on a daily, um, day by day case. So um, it's very important to also understand, but on, on, I really don't know how to, Put it, but on the other hand, you also need to. We also need to understand where the point where they are coming from, because if they don't go out to to cater for their families, there's no way they'll be able to put food on their family's table. So there has to be a balance, and there has to be more of um, speaking to these people as well to let them understand that it is for their own benefit. Yesterday, I was talking to one of my colleagues, and he was saying, um, in his in his own part of um, Lagos, there's nothing called shutdown. Everybody's going about their business. That's around, um, I think, Songo, um, around 
the outskirts, almost the outskirts of Lagos, and people are going about their normal business like there's nothing happening without face masks and all of those things, and that they need to put food on their table. While we understand that part, we also need to find a balance. If you have no business going out, if you are not part of the essentials that the federal government already mentioned that you can go about uh, with your business, you need to sit at home. While I understand that there is also the case of I have to feed my family, etc. We also have to find a balance between getting out to go and feed yourself and then also protecting yourself in order not to contact coronavirus. Okay. Um, what's this, um, this beatingcorona.ng? I believe it's a, it's a place where you can get information across the country uh, with regards to location of households that need help and all of that. What is it exactly about? Why should people visit this site? And then how do you translate that to the average person on the street who probably doesn't have access to the internet? Okay, so um, at the point when we decided to um, do beatingcorona.ng, we realized that there were a lot of interventions, especially even individuals trying to just contribute their own quarter in solving um, the issues associated with the COVID-19, which one of it is hunger. And we realized that a lot of um, people, uh, individuals, institutions are trying to do something, but there was no authoritative site that collects where people can go to and if you look at the beatingcorona.ng site, you realize that the interventions are being created state by state. So you can be in Ibia state and then find interventions within your area. Another reason why we, uh, why we decided to do the beatingcorona.ng was also we have um, individuals who have reached out to the future project to say, I have this money, I want to give it out. And because we, we don't collect the money to share, we decided that the organization to help them also reach more people. So we decided to create the, the website for people who want to find help and people who want to support those already helping other people. So um, we've had people also reach us directly. Um, I, I remember when um, Chidi was saying that people who are considered poor are uh, also people who don't have access to the social media. So we, we are going through the route of also text messaging. We've had um, individuals, families um, reach out to us via phone to say, oh, we don't have any to eat for today and then we connect them to an organization within their state that they can reach out to to get the needs they require so that's what bt corona um, corona ng is about okay and what are some of the maybe some of the, the places that you've i've seen that uh, people need help the most what areas do you find that people need some of the most help um, in the past week, uh, we've realized that people in Lagos, um, Ogun State, generally in the southwest and a few of the northern states have reached out to us directly. And then also we realized that there are more individuals coming out to also say, I have the sum of money I want to donate to this organization. And then we link them up, mostly in the southwest and in the northern region. Okay. So it's beatingcorona.ng. Yes, please. Okay. Well, thank you very much, Bukola. Just um, we're going to go back okay. to Chidi now, just very quickly before we go on a break. Chidi, just before we go now, um, what are your expectations? I want to I want to say from like tomorrow, the, the lockdown is supposed to end tomorrow, hypothetically speaking, or at least based on based on the facts we have on ground. We don't know if there's going to be an extension tomorrow. What are your expectations going forward in the new week? Um, so if if the lockdown ends tomorrow, my expectation is that um, I mean people still still um, you know take protective measures, um, go out only if you need to go out, um, pra practice social distancing, um, sanitize, sanitize always, wear your face mask, um, wear gloves if you can, disposable gloves if you can, of course, and don't touch your face. I mean all the things we all the things we learned when we heard about the heard about the virus, let's all start practicing it. If we do have to go out, um, I would not recommend. To be honest, I would not recommend. And I'm saying this for selfish reasons. I, I'm, and I, I know a lot of people feel the same way. A lot of I understand why some people will want to go out, but I would not recommend. Our systems cannot handle it. But if we do go out, then let's all practice um, them safe measures so we don't all fall sick. Um, but if the lockdown continues. Let's all persevere and let's still go out only when we need to go out. And let's hope the government does what the government has to do, needs to do to ensure that the country, the people who pay taxes are not suffering at this particular time. All right. We're going to take a break now. When we come back, we'll continue our conversation on COVID-19. Please just don't go away.